This week on Healthy Living, understanding glaucoma and how vision loss affects people worldwide. An expert from Tanzania explains more on the eye disease. And how a new weight loss drug could have benefits for the heart. Plus, health workers in Nigeria say poor power supply is forcing them to stop offering service at night. These stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello, I'm Kamiti Kibayasi. Thank you for joining us on Healthy Living. Vision, the most dominant of our senses, plays a critical role in every facet and stage of our lives. The World Health Organization says a group of eye conditions, primarily called glaucoma, results in damage to the optic nerve and causes vision loss. It is the leading cause of irreversible blindness and second heading cause of blindness. The WHO also states that worldwide, at least 22 billion people have a near or distance vision impairment. In terms of regional differences, the prevalence of distance vision impairment in low and middle income regions is estimated to be higher than in higher income regions. Rates of unaddressed near vision impairment is estimated to be more than 80% in Western, Eastern and Central Sub-Saharan Africa, while comparative rates in high-income regions of North America, Western Europe and Asia-Pacific is reported to be much lower. In Burkina Faso, glaucoma is the second leading cause of blindness after cataracts. Health professionals consider it a public health problem. Its prevalence is just over 4%. Living with glaucoma is difficult. Many patients hope that their federal government will subsidize care and products. Lamine Traore has more from Ouagadougou. In this neighborhood of Tampui, Ouagadougou, lives 60-year-old retired teacher Monique Subwega Yameogo. Five years ago, she was plagued with violent migraines, unable to bear the pain any longer, and after being hospitalized, she decided to take steps to find out why she was suffering. She was diagnosed with glaucoma. I did many tests. I did the visual field, OCT. They made me read for visual acuity. That's how I found out I had this disease, and they started treating me. The treatment of glaucoma is truly demanding. Monique says it is a long-term treatment. I use one product in the morning and another in the evening. I've had to program the treatment time on my phone. It's really restrictive. You also have to have the money. These products are expensive. There are many symptoms associated with glaucoma. We often think it's when the eye itself hurts that we have to go to the ophthalmologist. No, there are other symptoms, especially in the head, that can alert us to go and see the ophthalmologist. Maybe if I'd left earlier? I don't know. But if we leave earlier, we can find a solution before the disease gets worse. At the Yalgado Woodraogo Hospital in the heart of Wakadugu, Dr. Gertrude Meda in the ophthalmology department says glaucoma is widespread across Burkina Faso. It's the second leading cause of blindness after cataracts. It's a public health problem in Burkina Faso with a prevalence of 4.04%. Primary glaucoma in adults accounts for 80% of all glaucomas. Here, at least 50% of patients come with glaucoma and they come in with very advanced stages. Dr. Meda says there are many reasons why a person can contract glaucoma. You can get glaucoma because your parents have it or because your anatomy gives you a narrow angle that slows down the circulation of aqueous humor. You also have risk factors such as being of African descent. These are the people who suffer most from glaucoma. It's also hereditary. 
You have myopia, high blood pressure and diabetes, which are other risk factors. According to specialists, it is important to be screened from the age of 40 to avoid blindness. In practice, screening remains the surest way to prevent glaucoma. Treatment is for life. There's laser treatment and surgery. All of this helps to slow the progression of the disease, but not cure it. To learn more about glaucoma and how a baby can be born with it, we hear from Dr. Nuru Mambola, an ophthalmologist at Bugando Hospital in Mwanza, Tanzania. Um, a baby can be born with glaucoma in two ways. They can develop the disease in utero due to it being a genetic cause, or they can develop the disease due to being having other eye disease or other systemic condition. So for a baby, the treatment option first line is treatment. We have to do surgery because their drainage system, there is a, there is a fluid in the eye known as aqueous humor. It's usually, it does not drain adequately. We need to do surgery and then they continue with medication. For all that, first line treatment is drugs, so eye drops. So they can use eye drops. Um, up to four, maximum up to four eye drops, and then the second line treatment is laser therapy, whereby we make a way in the eye using laser, and third line treatment is surgery, again to create a drainage in the eye. My advice is know this disease, um, know the signs, know the symptoms. In children, at least we get some signs and symptoms, such as tearing, such as intolerance to light, and such as um, um, twitching of the eye. We also get um, signs whereby the eyeball is enlarged and the cornea is enlarged but in all that by the time you have signs and symptoms usually you've lost vision so please come to the hospital get your eye checked annually um, and then um, get treatment so that we can prevent you from going blind for many the combination of vision and hearing loss can make for a confined and isolating existence. A startup in Boston is developing a robot to expand communication and access to information. VOA's Tina Trin has more. <laughs> Samantha Johnson knows tactile sign language, a version of sign language used by some in the deafblind community. Deafblind people communicate through tactile signing, also known as hand over hand signing. So the deaf blind person holds onto the back of the hand of the signer and receives the signs into their palm directly. When the pandemic struck, Johnson wondered what it meant for those who rely on the touch-based method of communication. Because interpreting services stopped, social distancing was in place, the millions of deaf blind Americans didn't have access to communication. She and her team of engineers at Tatum Robotics came up with the Tatum T1, a robotic hand that can sign letters of the American Sign Language alphabet. Our goal is to develop the first assistive communication tool for the deafblind community that prioritizes tactile sign. It's currently made with all flexible components, which kind of serves two purposes. Not only does it really mimic a human hand, so it's really easy for the deafblind person to acclimate to its signing, but it's also really safe. Johnson says the T1 will connect to the cloud to translate any text-based content. So that could be emails, websites, ebooks. And what it does is it will take that content, it will translate it out of English and into ASL, and then output it for the deafblind user. Jamie Lard is completely deaf and has very little vision. She relies on tactile signing and an interpreter to communicate. In the absence of an interpreter, the T1 can serve as a stand-in and translate words typed into a connected laptop. It said, hi, my name is Tina. It's still in development, but Johnson hopes the device will ultimately provide greater independence and connection. Technology that can truly be a helping hand. Tina Trin, VOA News, Boston. The maker of the drug Wegovi, Nova Nordisk, says a large study has shown the highly effective obesity treatment also had a clear cardiovascular benefit boosting the Danish company's hopes of moving beyond its image as a lifestyle drug. WeGovi has been transforming the weight loss market since its U.S. launch in June 2021, capturing the attention of patients, investors, and celebrities worldwide. 
Here's more in this Reuters report narrated by Karina Chaudhry. Novo Nordisk hopes to show additional health benefits from taking its hugely popular weight loss drug, Wegovy, apart from losing weight and cutting risk of heart disease. We saw a 20% reduction in risk of having what we call a major adverse cardiovascular event. And that is the combination of myocardial infarction, stroke, at uh, cardiovascular death. But Novo hopes further analysis of the results from the five-year trial, which included more than 17,000 patients, will reveal more health benefits in areas such as kidney disease, heart failure, and risks of hospitalization. We'll also look at all-cause mortality. We'll look at heart failure. We'll look at uh, kidney disease. And we'll also look at what is important to, uh, to payers, in addition to what we already mentioned, namely uh, risk of hospitalization, days uh, in hospital, uh, again creating a holistic picture of the benefits uh, that we see, uh, potentially see with smoking side. And all of these data will be presented later this year. Novo hiked its full-year outlook on the back of better-than-expected sales of its highly effective diabetes and obesity drugs Ozempic and Wegovy, which are based on the same active ingredients, semaglutide. Nigeria's unreliable power grid is not only slowing down the country's economic growth, but health workers say it can lead to unwanted hospital shutdowns at night. But one startup is giving hospitals hope. Al Hassan Bala has this report narrated by Haruna Shehu. For most rural dwellers in Nigeria, hospitals or health centers closing at dusk has become a norm because of an unreliable or weak electricity supply. In areas where hospitals must operate at night without electricity, health workers attend to their patients using flashlights or lanterns. This used to be the situation at the primary health care center in Kagu, an urban area outside the capital, Abuja. Staff nurse Rose Bawatonga explains. Honestly, we are not finding things easy. It was really a bad situation for people working, especially at night duty. Like, in terms of conducting delivery, the nurses don't even agree to do night duty here because there was no light and they are so scared. Tonga said storing medicines like vaccines has been an issue. And it is not just health workers that are impacted by lack of electricity, but also patients in need. Even the woman, the pregnant woman, they don't really like coming. You know, so sometimes the nurses will be at home. Once they reach here, they will not place a call. Somebody is on label. But things have changed at the Karu Health Center. The hospital now has a 24-hour uninterrupted power supply because of Volsos Energy, a solar power startup. Engineer Tomiwa Bio Ojo is the chief executive officer of Volsos Energy. Founded in 2016, his startup has so far provided solar power to one facility. But BioOjo says solar power is the right approach for sustainable electricity to healthcare facilities across Nigeria. The power that they require on a daily basis is relatively small. You know, they don't they don't have um, heavy equipment, so to say. You get what I'm saying? They don't have um, e equipment that require everything that they have there is just a few um, kilowatts and I feel this can be solved by uh, mini grids you know which is a solution that we provide. Volsos Energy is just one of many solar initiatives popping up across Nigeria. According to numbers published by Statista, solar energy capacity in the country amounted to 37 megawatts in 2022, a 12 jump from the year before. Thanks for watching Healthy Living. For the latest news and coverage, stay connected to Voice of America.